Hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Council of Elrond, a Lord of the Rings podcast. Have you ever wondered why those giant eagles couldn't have just brought the ring to Mount Doom and saved the Fellowship a whole lot of bother? Well, that's what we'll be discussing today. I'm your host, Dave, and as per usual, with me is my co-host and brother, Johnny. Stick around to the end of the podcast to hear a silly but interesting theory about Gandalf. Welcome to the Hotel California. So, Johnny, why couldn't the Eagles bring the ring to Mount Doom, like physically? Well, there's there's a lot of different reasons for why they couldn't. Um, like, I mean, physically, they could have. Uh, they have the ability. Um, they have claws. I suppose they could probably clutch onto it or something. Put it on yeah. a certain chain. They could grab it. Uh, they could uh, carry uh, a bear of the ring. They could, they could have carried Frodo. Uh, Frodo. A bear. They could have carried. They could have carried a bear. A ring bear. Who had Frodo on his back? Exactly. <laughs> You're the ring bear. Bear. He's the ring bearer bear. Yeah. <laughs> the ring bearer bearer bear. The bearer bear. Who yeah. bears the bearer? Uh, <laughs> the bearer of all bears. <laughs> <laughs> One bear to bear them all. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he could have they could have physically brought it but uh, there's many reasons why they shouldn't have and that they really couldn't well one of them I would say one of the biggest reasons is stealth that they this was this kind of like a secretive mission that they were trying to like sneak into Mordor and all this kind of thing and uh, I mean the eagles they're not the most subtle creatures in the world like they couldn't just be like they're not the sneakiest yeah I mean you know they're they need to work on their uh, sneak sneaking skills. Like maybe Gollum could uh, could help them out with that. <laughs> Go on, give us a bit more Gollum. Sneak. Sneak. <laughs> so what were you doing? Sneak. Um, well, first of all, there is no story. There's n- there's no freaking story if the eagles were just to bring the ring to Mount Doom. So. That's the first and foremost. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, exactly. Because Tolkien, the story that he wanted to write was about the the journey into Mordor. So, yeah, you're correct. You're, yeah. you're exactly correct. When people start giving off about why didn't the Eagles do it, like, well, well, why why is there ever any stories? That's uh, that's the main thing, I suppose. But it's not a plot yeah. hole, which is good to know. If we're looking mm-hmm. at the book lore, I suppose the main reason would be that the Eagles are they're sort of messenger messengers of Manwe. And they're mm. said to be possibly even more powerful than the Maya themselves, which are, you know, Gandalf, Saruman, uh, the Balrog, I think. The Balrog are Maya. The, the, well, they are Maiar, I should say. Yeah. Uh, so y- you could see in the movies how the ring corrupted Saruman or just, I know he, he didn't really possess the ring at a, at, at a one point, but he was easily corrupted. Um, in the In the books, the only one who's completely untempted by the ring is Tom Bombadil. Mm. So... Surely Gandalf was afraid of bringing the ring to the eagles as he was afraid to take the ring himself. As you, as you remember, when Frodo was trying to give it give it to Gandalf and Gandalf refused because... And Galadriel as well, another 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 powerful being who is like, a, like, it's a big test for her to not touch the ring and she passes the test, so uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So these almighty beings of Middle-earth, they seem like they could be easily corrupted and they're wise enough to understand that they could be corrupted and if they were they could do awful things so i think that would be one of the reasons why gandalf wouldn't have chosen to bring the ring to the eagles or bring it up at the council but hypothetically if they could resist corruption there are other obstacles including just the the size of the eagles they they you know as you said they're not going to be very sneaky going into into mordor um there's massive Nazgul that fly around there and there's many spies that would see them. Mm. All the orcs. Crabine and... from Dudlin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They they would easily spot the eagles. Um, secrecy was the whole mission. The eagles could have been shot down. They could have been attacked by the fell beasts. Yeah, that's another, it's another important thing to realise that people are like, they could have just easily flown into Mordor and just like gone into the volcano. And It's like, Mordor is like a fortress and it's like, imagine you've got like 20 eagles flying in or imagine you have a hundred eagles. It doesn't matter. You could have a thousand eagles. Only one of those is going to be the person carrying the ring or carrying the ring bearer. And if one arrow or one fell beast crashes into that guy and he accidentally drops the ring, drops Frodo or whatever, if one thing goes wrong with it, like, I mean, they don't have to shoot down all the eagles. They only have to shoot down the one eagle that has the ring. So that's too much of a risk. It's not like 
It's not like and, a good And there couldn't plan. be a worse place to shoot down an eagle and drop the ring. Dropping it in Mordor would be <laughs> the worst place to do it. Or losing it if it wasn't in Mordor, if you just lost the ring somewhere. That's that's way too much of a risk. I've dropped stuff that I was carrying when I was on a Ryanair flight. I mean, uh, you know, it's that that's like because it's relatively bumpy. And I was like, oh, man, I, <laughs> like something like my if i'm watching a movie on my tablet and it just there's a bit of a bit of turbulence and my tablet just falls off the little uh, the little table that's happened to me before you can't be like i'm on the back of an eagle i'm flying at who know, god knows what speed and uh there's you're in mordor there's probably a big cloud in my face i can't see anything it's completely probably a less uh, bumpy ride than ryanair though let's, it's probably let's a safer fair. landing as well yeah yeah <laughs> Ryanair, please sponsor us. <laughs> I'd, ra- I'd rather land in a volcano on the back of an eagle than uh, land into Dublin Airport on a, on a Ryanair flight. The eagles are coming! Another obstacle would be that the, the eagles, they couldn't just drop the ring into the volcano because it specifically says in the books and the movies that the ring must be destroyed in the mountain, right? Like in where the ring was forged. So in the fires from whence mm. it came. <laughs> So mm. it, it it couldn't have been dropped from above. Um, you needed to go into the mountain. Of course, if they spotted the eagles coming, Sauron would have just had the the entrance to the mountain completely covered, swarming with orcs, I suppose. So no, and exactly as we said, it's the eagles. They don't scream like uh, stealth or subtlety. So when they're a thousand leagues away or whatever, you know, they weren't in the metric system in uh, Middle Earth. They weren't using kilometers. So uh, they were using like leagues or whatever it was when they were like 100 <laughs> 500 leagues away there's going to be some crevine or some orc or some you know evil man something yeah. is going to see them flying towards mordor and be like hey saruman's got a palantir he's going to get onto the owl uh, onto the blower to to, to <laughs> mr sauron over there and he's going to just be like hey by the way the eagles are coming they've got the ring just shoot them down and the ring's yours it's too risky and also as well, I don't know if you've ever thought about how, like, so what you've just said is like uh, perfectly correct, that they can't just drop it into the top of the volcano. And even if they could, let's just imagine that they could just fly over, drop it in. They're not going to be able to get too close to the volcano for the reasons that we said. They probably would have set up massive big catapults and have like a million archers standing around the, the top of the volcano. So they mm. need to keep their distance. And if you're flying at whatever speed you're flying and it's kind of like a, a flyby dropping of the ring, you need to be the Michael Jordan of Eagles to, to make sure that that shot's going in. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah. no, you know, no rim. You need to be the Luke Skywalker of Death Stars. <laughs> yeah, all net. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like you mentioned earlier as well, the, the whole objective of the, the Fellowship was secrecy. The Council of Elrond was a secret meeting and the whole mission was supposed to be as discreet as possible. The plan was to get into Mordor undetected. Uh, the whole reason for the Black Gate battle was to draw away attention from Mount Doom. So you remember when Aragorn looks into the Palantir in the in the Return of the King, he basically taunts Sauron with his sword. And uh, this drives Sauron absolutely crazy with anger and fear and anxiety. Like here is Sauron's biggest enemy at his doorstep. So Sauron really just wants to this is the new king that he absolutely hates Sauron wants to send his full force destroy the last alliance of men and just end everything so that was that was a really good means of distraction to pull all the orcs the forces of Mordor away from Mount Doom if they saw a bunch of eagles they would have just gone completely into reverse mode and were like oh send them back (laughs) somebody guard those doors (laughs) run away (laughs) I think we've been quoting quite a lot of uh Body Python and, and uh, the Holy Grail in these last <laughs> couple of years. Yeah. I didn't realize how quotable those movies were. <laughs> oh my God. They're one of the most quotable movies ever. <laughs> Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. So why didn't the Eagles bring the Fellowship at least some of the way? Why did they have to trek all the way through the mines of Moria? And... There are spies all over the place. Like the, there's, the spies aren't just near Mordor. The spies are uh, in all of Middle Earth. So if someone sees... A gang of eagles flying with like um, Gandalf and a few people. Like they could be at least be like, we don't know what's going on, but I should probably, uh, you know, alert the boss and tell him what's yeah. going on. And uh, you know, so there could be something like that. Um, secondly, as we've said before, secrecy was one of the main things, and the Council of Elrond. Um, shout out, 
was a secret was a secret um council and another thing is that we don't really know what Gandalf's plan was maybe his plan was to go with the eagles like cuz he he was he didn't tell anybody his plans and then when he fell in moria aragorn uh, admits that he didn't know what gandalf's plan was to do yeah. when they, uh, after moria and so it's it's plausible and it's well i don't know if it's plausible but it's definitely possible that gandalf had planned to take the eagles but again it's not like hiring a, a car like, exactly like they're they're not a taxi service they are their own thing and like you've said they are powerful beings it's not like they're just someone's pet. They are like their own Ex- thing. Exactly. They're, they're in, innately they're good, but they don't want to be meddling in the dealings of Middle Earth. And like you said, they're they're not anyone's pet. They're not Gandalf's pet. They're high. They're a highly respected race, and um, they'd probably be seen as above all the other races in Middle Earth. So the elves wouldn't just be like, "Oh, let's get the eagles to do it." Our our little pets that just do anything. It would be like me asking Joe Biden for him to give me a lift to South Africa to save some <laughs> small forest or something like that. <laughs> like, Yeah, it's, exactly. It's just like they are their own race. It's not like that they're just there to do the bidding of men and elves. Like it's, it's like humans going to try and get dolphins to just do something for them. Like, hey, dolphins, can you go and sort <laughs> out like, I don't know. Uh, my taxes. <laughs> so, sort out my taxes. Because someone needs to do them. <laughs> In the Fellowship book, Gandalf says to Gwehir, how far can you bear me? To which the beast replies, many leagues, but not to the ends of the earth. I was sent to bear tidings, not burdens. So there again, it's it's basically the eagle saying to Gandalf, look, I'll I'll help you out of a rut here, but like, I'm not going to do your job for you. Don't push it, Gandalf. Don't be pushing <laughs> it now. Don't push your luck. Yeah. It also mentions in The Hobbit that they, they grow tired easily. And again, in The Hobbit, the eagles specifically express their fear of entering the lands of men because of their bows. So they're they're afraid, like. They're afraid that they're going to get shot down, which they're, they're big targets. They would easily get shot down. I think when people think of the eagles, they think of them as like almighty beings, which they are in one sense, but they are in eagle form and all it takes is one arrow and the whole mission is gone. And like they're a race like any other race, like as in, for example, you could easily just say, why didn't they get the dwarves to take the ring? And it's like, well, for the exact same reasons, dwarves, maybe they could have been corrupted by the ring, like the eagles could yeah. be corrupted. Maybe the dwarves aren't so aren't that stealthy. Maybe they would have been making loads of noise and breathing as heavily as Gimli does in the forest of Lothorian. <laughs> I have the eyes of a hawk and the ears of a fox. And also the dwarves could be just like, we don't want to get involved in your stupid war. Like, as in, that's, uh, yeah. that sounds like a terrible idea for us. So the eagles are like the eagles can speak english as well or the english they can speak uh the 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 language we- westron. westron yeah they can speak westron so they can speak to the people of middle earth and they're not just some dumb animals yeah i was thinking that it may be in the movies if the eagles were portrayed or if they were given speaking roles i suppose <laughs> if they actually spoke and had a bit more character let's say if somebody interacted with them and they were like no i don't want to meddle in your business maybe people would see them more as an actual race of creatures that have their own thought Mm. and not just a pet that can bring you from a to b yeah they have their own goings on and their own uh, troubles and their own uh, problems keep it secret keep it safe so this is a new section of the podcast called keep it secret where we try to do exactly the opposite and expose some behind-the-scenes secrets about the filming of The Lord of the Rings, which you may not know. I, Johnny, will ask Dave here some questions to see if he knows anything about these interesting tidbits and see how many he can get right. So, the first question I'm going to start with is a quite an easy one, and I suspect Dave knows the answer to this one. So, Dave, who is the person from the movies that voiced Treebeard? Uh... I know it. I'm trying to think of his name. It's Gimli. I can't remember his name. Oh, John Reese davies John Reese davies That is correct. Yes. <laughs> I like the way you... Uh, that slow motion of his name. That was great. Uh, yes, very, very good. So yes, John Reese davies who was the voice of Gimli, uh, sorry, who played Gimli, was also the voice of Treebird. Mm. So good job. Well done. You've got the first answer. Uh, you've got the first one correct. He just kind of toned down the Scottish accent and it's then the exact same if you hear it <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got an incredible voice uh mm. if you've seen him in uh indiana jones and those movies or as the well, princess diaries so, princess diaries of course. 
Next question, Dave, is we know Fran Walsh, Peter Jackson's partner, created the sound of the Nazgul shriek. Mm. But do you know where she actually dressed up and recorded scenes as one of the nine? Oh. Um oh is it is it when Frodo puts on the ring on uh Weathertop and they show the the wraiths in their former glory and they look like kings? Ooh, close, but you're way off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um okay, wait, let me let me let me go again. Is it Oh, oh no, that would make no sense. I was about to say when it shows the nine men at the start holding the ring. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Um, is it, I'm just going to guess, is she like a really good horse rider and it was one of the horse riding scenes? No, no, it was a, it was a scene where we get one Nazgul on his own. Is it the one the, where the, oh, oh, is it when he hops off the horse and is sniffing at the hobbits? Yeah, exactly. That's correct. That's so what? Correct. She, so she I wrote, dressed up. I, I wrote down as my. I wrote down as my my answer to this one. Sniffy, 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 uh, sniffy. So yeah, it's basically the scene where Frodo and Sam meet Merry and Pippin for the first time, and then they run down the hill and they they all hide from one Nazgul who arrives and gets off his horse and starts sniffing around, and then all the uh, the insects and the bugs start coming yeah, out from uh, from the soil. Um, so yeah, that was actually uh, Fran Walsh that was dressed up wow. as the Nazgul in that scene. Deadly. So there you go. Next question is who voiced the Nazgul who we first hear speaking and says Shire Baggins. I, I was just thinking that for the last question because it sounds like a woman. Um... I'm, it is not. Uh, oh right. Oh uh, God. Is it someone from the cast? It is. Is it someone from the fellowship? Uh, not really. Um, not really. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see this, but Johnny's trying to give me hints, <laughs> and I have no <laughs> idea what they are. I'm I'm making crazy. I'm making crazy faces. He's just trying to throw me off. Um, I'm going to say, uh, oh, uh, Galadriel. Oh, wait, that's a woman. No, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I have no You're idea. really having problems with your male and female today. <laughs> um, the answer is Andy Serkis. Ah, for God's sake. Why couldn't I think of the one famous voice actor in the cast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said not really when we spoke about the fellowship because he's not um yeah. he's not really in it. Yeah. Uh, I meant I meant the fellowship like the crew, not like the the film. Ah, oh, sorry. I, I thought you meant the movie. The movie. Yeah. <laughs> um Right, yeah. So that's uh, Andy Serkis oh, was the voice of the person saying Shire Baggins in the first in the first movie. Very feminine. Um, do you think so? Yeah, I, like when 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 you were talking about the Fran Walsh being the Nazgul in that sniffing scene, I, I don't know why, but immediately I just heard Shire Baggins or whatever, and it just sounds like a mm. woman. Yeah, I I think we've spoken about it before how uh, Fran Walsh, she uh, came up with the sounds for the Nazgul, that mm. kind of shrieking and screaming. I think they kind of they kind of did that by accident. They weren't planning for her to like record that, but um, they were asking for like ideas of how they should sound. And she kind of said, oh, I think they'd sound something like this. And she kind of just made the sounds. And then they just took those sounds and used them as the actual final sounds of the Nazgul. Yeah. And they were like, that sounds incredible. So it wasn't like she went into maybe she went into the studio later and did those sounds as well. Yeah. But I think I think I heard somewhere that it was like the initial sh- sounds that she made uh, that they took. They've obviously been but, massively yeah. edited as well. It's yeah. not just like that's that's what she sounds like when she screams. That's how she sounds. <laughs> She's a wraith. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so next question: Who did the voice? These are all voice questions. Mm-hmm. Who did the voice for Gollum screaming "Lost"? Uh, at the beginning of the first movie, during the prophecy, during the prologue, oh. Andy Serkis had not yet been cast as Gollum when that when they shot that scene. Really? Do you know the scene where he says, yeah. you can probably do a better impression where he says, Lost. No, I can't do it. 
unless I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Jeez, uh, yeah. I don't know, because it sounds really like Andy Yeah, Serkis. it sounds very similar. Mm. Um, is it another cast member again? It is a member of the Fellowship. And I mean the Fellowship, like the actual The Nine. I don't know why I'm guessing this, but I'm just going to go for Sean Astin. Uh, no, but it is a Hobbit. Ooh, Elijah, he sounds fairly high pitched. Uh, no, <laughs> no. We've got one of the other two. You fifty fifty. All right, it's um. <laughs> can you get the can, Bill, can you... Billy Boyd? <laughs> <laughs> is it not you, Billy Boyd? You, it's just, no, it's Dominic Monaghan. Oh yeah, Dominic Monaghan. First try. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. First time. Uh, yeah. So Dominic Monaghan uh, did the voice of Gollum wow. in Prophecy in the prologue. Yeah, yeah. He's the one that screams lost. But he's got uh, such a first scene. He's got a really croaky voice now. Oh, well, maybe that's from doing that scene. <laughs> From Manchester. Yeah, well, not, not just like his accent. I mean, like, whenever you hear him talk, he's like, Yeah, I'm Dominic Monaghan. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You know, he's got a real yeah. kind of <laughs> low pitch voice. Like, How are you getting on? But yeah. I don't know. It's kind of rusty. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was another cool kind of That's class. little tidbit that we're not going to keep it secret or keep it safe. Um, my next question is, who in the Fellowship, again, the, the, nine, uh, the nine characters in the Fellowship, mm-hmm. who had an allergic reaction to their costume? Oh, I think I know this. Again, John Rhys Davies was allergic to his beard, wasn't he? Because... He was indeed. Yeah. He was indeed. But, however, that's not the only answer. Another member of the, of the Fellowship was, was allergic to another part of their costume. Um... I'm, so good job well done on John Reese davies Gimli was allergic to his own beard I think he used to break out in a rash yeah because I remember at the end of filming he like burnt the beard I think he was asked to be to come back to play in the Hobbit movies and he just couldn't face the beard again yeah um, not the beard <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm gonna guess probably one of the Hobbits with their prosthetic feet is that no okay let me see who else oh no the answer oh, oh. Oh, was it legless to his prosthetic ears? Oh, you're you've got the right guy, but not not the ears. No, uh, legless was actually uh, had an allergic reaction to his eye contact. Oh, that I did hear that. Yeah, wow. And I I I I, I, don't, I haven't noticed it, but apparently in some stages of the movie, his eye color changes mm. a little bit because uh, he couldn't wear the contacts for certain for certain shots because he was allergic to them. I've heard that before, and and also I know it's nothing to do with Lord of the Rings, but. Uh, um, Emilia Clarke the girl that plays Daenerys Targaryen in, in Game of Thrones she was she's supposed to have purple eyes according to the books and uh, they cast her but then she just couldn't put in the eye contacts I don't know was she allergic <laughs> or did she just like think it was too ick and uh, it wasn't she was like Rachel from Friends yeah when's that do you remember no when is it is it Rachel I think it's Rachel from Friends the scene where she has like a problem with her eye and she's trying to put in eye drops and she just can't do it because she's just too grossed out by it and they're like trying it to it is gross <laughs> they're trying to like pin her down on the ground and hold her oh, eyes open yeah. and like squirt the eye drops into her eye is that Rachel yeah well yeah so that's that's another person that refused to wear contacts for the role there you go hmm. we must move on we cannot linger next question Dave uh, what practical effect in the movies uses the chemical agent found in cat's eyes say that to me one more time sure so what practical effect in the movies uses the chemical agent that's found in cat's eyes and signs on the road um what practical effect is it something to do with gandalf's staff with the light shining out of it or is it is it when mm. Denethor is burning? No. Um nope. it's something to do with reflection. Nope. I'm guessing. Yes. Cat's it eyes. Is. Think about think about uh when you see a cat or you're driving your car at night, you see a cat on the road, or you see the, eyes the cat's eyes, what are what are called the cat's yeah. eyes, uh, in the middle of the road, those little uh, reflective things. Mm-hmm. Think about that when you're driving at night, everything's dark and you can see one thing illuminating Ooh, in the Gollum's eyes. No? No, no. <laughs> I, I like you. Uh, ooh, I haven't. No. Um, uh, think about something that's reflecting in the moonlight. Oh, the the Durin's door. 
Yeah, the doors at Moria. The doors at Moria. Deadly. Uh, so they used uh, a chemical agent that's uh, that's also found in cats' eyes and that they use in in road signs. Uh, they use that to paint Durin's door. Oh, I'm surprised and, uh, they just didn't light it up kind of normally, like like stick in actual light like just put LEDs in behind the the carving. Probably be more noticeable and it'd be more just like bright and Maybe, like here yeah. it's sort of. I don't know. I think it came out pretty cool. No, it, it does look cool, but it, it, I just imagine that they use LEDs. It, it looks like a light coming off it. I know it's supposed to be like a, a magical and mystical moonlight mm. effect, but it looks yeah. like light. Well, there you go now. Well, there you go now, yeah. yeah. Now you know. Learn something new every day. So next question. What did they do for the shots of Bill the Pony where it was too dangerous for a, a real pony to be uh, shot in those scenes. For example, uh, in a swamp or areas where a real pony would just refuse to to, to go. Did Mary and Pippin have a front horse and back horse? <laughs> How do you mean? How do you mean? Um, like a pantomime horse? I know that you're saying this is a joke, but yes. That's <laughs> oh, really? <what> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Mary and Pippin. Wait, but, what? Oh. So, um, not Mary and Pippin, but... Um, so there were some there were some scenes in the Fellowship of the Ring where they were shooting with Bill the Pony. I think especially outside the doors of Moria, where it was the ground was really swampy, and uh, they couldn't get real ponies to go there because first of all they would just refuse, and secondly it was just a bit dangerous for ponies. Mm. So they got two men to dress oh up God. as Bill the Pony in a panto pony kind of costume, and uh, there's a couple of scenes where. Obviously, it's kind of in the background, and you can't notice it because it's really mm. like it's not, it's not, it's not important. It's not in but focus. They, yeah, they actually kind of uh, had two men, so it's kind of like that cartoonish kind of uh, two guys dressed up as a pony. It's so funny! That's isn't so it? funny. <laughs> and uh, the final thing that I want to speak to you about is that the city of Edoras was built on a hill in New Zealand, and a helicopter rig was set up to film the big sweeping shots of the set. Mm. However, because it was so windy, the shots were not very good and they came out pretty bad and unusable. So the shot used in the film when the heroes arrive was actually shot when filmmakers were building the set and was only meant to show Peter Jackson its progress. Using those shots in the film required filmmakers to remove construction cranes Mm. and safety fences and to finish building the set digitally. So, oh uh, did you know this, that uh, the, the final shot that we see and where they actually built the entire town of Edoras, we never actually get to see sweeping uh, like landscape shots of uh, Edoras, really. And that's all digitally added in. But they actually built it, but it was never used. Did they build the entire like village? Or I know it's supposed to be like a city, but it's, it's really a small little town. Like They built the entire village on that big hill, which is a famous hill in New Zealand. Mm. And all of the shots that we see of that town, like the full shots of it overhead, are never actually, they're not, they're not even real. So the, all the effort that went into actually building it was kind of for nothing. I, I didn't know they actually built the entire thing. I thought they might have just done the Great Hall and, I don't know, maybe a gate or two. No, I, I believe I believe they built the whole thing. And then uh, they didn't even leave it there as like a tourist attraction. Yeah, they took they, it all they, out. they, they, they took, took the whole thing down again afterwards, after it's been done. And uh, you can go now, um, if you go to New Zealand, you can go and visit that area where it was shot. It's just a hill. That big, <laughs> that big hill. Yeah, it's a famous hill mm. now. I don't know if it was famous before, but uh, it's pretty famous yeah. now. Um, no, that's mad. So how could they not use the footage? Like what was so wrong with the footage after? How does wind affect it? Well, they said it was windy, so the the, the whole helicopter was shaking, oh, so okay. the shots were just really shaky. Oh, that's funny. So um, they just they just said that they were, they were unusable because they, they were just like, obviously on the day that they shot uh, the scenes where they wanted to show Peter Jackson uh, how the construction was coming along and uh, yeah. basically what it was going to look like in the finished product, they shot some scenes and uh, they ended up ha- having to use those scenes. Because that's amazing. Good thing they didn't shoot those scenes on a little camera phone or something. <laughs> they obviously used a proper camera that's mad no I never heard that before that's that's a very good did you know or do you know well yeah there you go so that's the end of our keep it secret section very good thank you so there you have it the eagles didn't have time and would rather do eagle stuff like pooping on passersby and squawking at orcs before we finish though 
Have you heard the theory of fly, you fools? Um, I don't know what theory. I don't know what theory you're talking. About. Sorry, I don't know what, what theory, theory you're, you're talking about. <laughs> what theory? What what theory are you talking? What theory are you talking? Um, I assume I know the theory that you're talking about, which is that when Gandalf says fly, he really means get the eagles and fly to Mordor. Uh, I assume that's the theory that you're talking about. Yeah, there are many people that believe that Gandalf's last words when he says fly you fools are basically Gandalf's instructions to no I mean that's that's, that's a ridiculous that's a ridiculous comment. I know but it's it's a it, I, I, I was afraid to call it a theory but it's um it's a thing that people say yeah I mean also if you look at the if you look at Gandalf's character and his uh his style of speaking he uses the word fly all the time when he's talking about just like just like running away he's like yeah. right I'm gonna fly uh, I'm gonna fly now It's a common word that he uses for just like to move or to go. Uh, so he's definitely shouting at the at the, the fellowship, just being like, get out of here. He's not saying fly. And also, like, that's not an easy thing to do. If he's like, by the way, you should go and take the eagles. How would any of the fellowship know how to contact the eagles? None of them have ever uh, had any dealings with the eagles before. The only person that's really had any contact with the eagles before this time was Gandalf. And they were kind of like, chance happenings as well they weren't uh really obviously he didn't just like uh send up a smoke signal or something and call the eagles or whatever he doesn't know how to get into touch with them he just wanted his last word to be fool or fools he just wanted to call pippin a fool <laughs> one last time basically. fly you fools he was like fly all of you and pippin was what he was yeah. trying to say there <laughs> fly you and fools fly you fool of a took eagle well that's a wrap on another episode of the council of elrond I hope you can answer your annoying friends who ask, why couldn't the Eagles just do it? Anyways, thank you so, so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and maybe give us a share on your social medias and whatnot. Are there any other plot holes that you can think of? Or anything else that you wonder, why the hell didn't they just do that? We'd really love to know and talk to you about it. You can drop us a DM on our Facebook page, The Melon Heads, or on Twitter at Melon underscore Heads. Remember, that's Melon with two L's. All right, guys, that's all for now. We'll see you next time.